We all know Windows 7. A lot of us probably use Windows 7 at some point in our lives. But most people don't really do that these days, do they? Well, most people don't really use it as their main OS these days. So, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Now, before I do anything, I want to explain this a little bit. This is specifically using Windows 7 as my main desktop operating system. I use my mobile phone quite a bit, but not as much as other people my age. I can still use a newer version of Windows in specific cases, such as if I have to edit a video or use a virtual machine, the reason for this being so I could get better performance, or if there's a game that just I can't run on Windows 7 anymore. This last one didn't really pop up at all. This also means that I can still use other mobile devices to pass the time. Something that kind of was a little common in this, but with that out of the way, let's get into some history on Windows 7. Windows 7 was uh, conceived, I guess, before Windows XP even released with Microsoft's product strategy back in 2000, when they were going to do Windows Whistler, Longhorn and Black Home. Black Home got cancelled as such. Windows 7 is a bit of an evolution of Windows Vista, which had a very not going well development period. So much so that the development of Vista got reset and was based off of the Windows Server 2003 instead of Windows XP. Windows 7 began development in mid 2007. The earliest available build is build 6469, and there are a lot of available builds that you can try for yourself. Would I exactly recommend doing this? Not really. Windows 7's public beta was leaked in very early January 2009, with some of these versions having uh, Trojan included, but this wasn't really a problem because Microsoft released the public beta at CES, which happened just like a couple days later. Windows 7 entered release candidate not far after, and Windows 7 was released to manufacturing in July of 2009 and to the general public in October of the same year. Windows 7 had a bit of an interesting market marketing campaign that worked, with copies being sold faster than you can say the name of the operating system, probably. Uh, for example, some of the things that they did with marketing in Japan included the addition of a Windows 7 themed hamburger to Burger King's menu. Also in Japan, a sales agent creating an anime girl known as Nanami Midobe to promote the operating system. Windows 7 will receive a service pack in 2010, which also was the last service pack of any release of Windows. This update model would be uh, shifted away from with the release of Windows 8 in 2012. Windows 7 went out of mainstream support in 2016, with hardware support dropping soon after, as well as the sale of most editions of it, and extended support would end on the 14th of January 2020. Extended security updates for professional and other editions would continue until the 10th of January 2023, which also just so happened to be the same day that Windows 8.1 ended support. Extended Extended security updates for a specific version, however, are still provided until the 8th of October for Windows Embedded POS Ready 7, which isn't too much different from the main release. There are still a few things that work on Windows 7, whether intended or not. For example, Steam, plus you can also use a special web browser known as Supermium, which works on as far back as Windows XP, to pretty much use Windows 7 like it's your operating system. So, the computer that I'm going to be using Using for this video is an HP Compact 675 Pro Micro Tower or Mini Tower. This one in particular is a little bit different since it has an AMD Phantom 2 as well as 4 gigabytes of RAM and I think a 500 gigabyte hard drive. I could be wrong though. Okay, brief timeout. I need to provide some context here. I'm pretty sure that the hard drive is uh, labeled and advertised as 500 gigabytes. However, the amount of usable space is around 465 gigabytes approximately. Hard drives oftentimes are labeled with a simple number like 4 terabytes or 8 terabytes or 500 gigabytes or something, but they don't have that much storage. It may be off by its inch. Uh, for example, I have an 8 terabyte hard drive that I use for my YouTube videos. That's at least what it says, though. In Windows, however, it says that there are 7.27 terabytes that can actually be used. I just want to provide this little bit of a tidbit of information just to clear up any confusion if you're looking at numbers in the video. So, if this helps, then you're welcome. There's also integrated graphics. However, I don't really have have a lot of games that really are gonna be impacted a bit by this, thankfully. So, I think we should get going with this. First things first, 
I want to uh, get some stuff installed here on day one, and I need to install updates to make sure this doesn't go poorly. Spoiler alert, pretty much all of the updates failed on the first day, and I had to pretty much reinstall literally all of them. Oh, and uh, just a little bit of foreshadowing, Internet Explorer 11 was installed successfully, but Windows Update didn't think it was installed, so that went as well as you can guess it went. However, day one was not very eventful, I just installed a lot of stuff like an antivirus and updates. So with the change of monitor, let's now head to the next day, which I'm starting off by showing you some footage of me watching YouTube on this thing. I decided to watch videos on this thing in the morning because I watch videos with my breakfast. And well, yeah, I can't show you too much of this stuff because of the fact that these are not my videos. So I decided <laughs> to do a few things. First of all, I was thinking to myself why I don't type in my passwords that really matter to me on camera as I don't type my passwords on camera because I th have this theory that I can hear what key is being pressed and indicate what it is. So I wanted to just show this on camera using Microsoft Word. I'm not sure if it applies to other people, but it feels like it to me. I then wanted to go check my analytics because it was close to the end of the hour, and that's something I do often, is check my YouTube analytics. And looking back at the footage, things have actually changed a bit since I recorded this. But it's not really too much noteworthy. You can see all the uh, stuff that goes on behind the scenes, I guess. And then I decided to install PopCap titles as I still need to install a few things. And when I went to originally install PopCap games, it didn't really go well. And then I had lunch. Later, after doing some reorganization of my desktop, I decided to play some Bejeweled 3 and then I decided to set some reminders in the calendar and I decided to draw a program icon similar to what I used to do way back in the day. But that's generally gonna summarize day two. Day three, I did not really get a lot of footage. All I really got was footage of me watching videos and that was only 15 seconds of footage. But I do know what happened. I decided to draw some stuff and play some Bejeweled 2. I don't have footage of this, but I can at least tell you that it happened. Also, by the way, by this point, I needed to use one of those exceptions so I could finish up a video project and upload it. So there's that. Day four, I got no video footage. Like, nothing. I will say this, it was fairly similar stuff to day three, so not really missing out on anything. But then we get to day five, and I run into a bit of a problem. The PC randomly shut off while I was out of my room doing things. So, looking at the event viewer, it seems that there's Colonel Power 41 and another event indicating that this thing might likely have a similar problem problem to my previous laptop, which, if you don't know, had a thermal problem and would overheat pretty much at least once a month or so. So I went to go see that, however, this didn't happen again while I was doing this thing. I didn't do much on day 6, however, there is a reason for this. Long story short, in between day 5 and day 6, I got no sleep. So, you can uh, understand how well that went. In our terms, I was too deranged to really do much. That's not gonna stop me from giving you a tour on this day, though. So let's explore. I'm not going in per any particular order for this, so let's start with Control Panel. We have a bunch of system settings in here, however, the two that I'm gonna show you are System and Personalization. We next have Sticky Notes, which is, well, Sticky Notes. We also have the Desktop Gadget Gallery, which I'm not gonna cover too much. And we have Windows, okay, this did not work. Well, let's Let's give this as a second shot. We have Windows Media Center, and I don't have any other videos to show you, so you're not gonna get to see a lot of this. Let's move on immediately before I get copyrighted. We next have MS Paint, and as you can clearly see, I am not <laughs> very good at drawing US state borders. Okay, well maybe I could give Michigan's borders a shot. I don't know how I could mess this up though, because of the fact that the United States' most optimal border is a rectangle. <laughs> we next have Calculator, which has various things such as unit conversion. We next have Windows Explorer, which features libraries, which is a new feature in Windows 7. And Windows Photo Viewer, starring Software Project mascot of mine. But that's Windows Explorer. We also have WordPad. And I'd advise you to turn down your audio here, because... H! We have Getting Started, which doesn't start up immediately alongside Windows anymore. Windows DVD Maker, which I'm not going to demonstrate. XPS Viewer, otherwise known as Failed PDF Competitor Viewer. The good old Windows Movie Maker from Windows Essentials. Snipping Tool. A Windows Calendar imported from Windows Vista. A pinball game imported from Windows XP. Okay, not really. It's something I found on DeviantArt.
But I mean, hey, it's pinball. By the way, in terms of games, we have Solitaire... Minesweeper with the cheats, <laughs> Purple Place, which is what all true gamers have played, as well as probably Toho. The Games Explorer, which shows how many PopCap games I have on here. Chess Titans. Uh, by the way, I don't know how to play chess, so don't call me out for playing this badly. I don't know how to play this game. And then you know that I, of course, have to give at least one Toho game a shot. Honestly, it's becoming such a big running gag that I'm just gonna keep doing it. And that's basically gonna be it for games as well as the tour so let's go onward to the last day so day seven i'm gonna be doing cleanup and starting to transition back to windows 10 on this day so in order to do this i decided to create a log of what i did each day that somehow wasn't entirely accurate i'm looking at you day four and then second thing second i decided to log out of my google account because it's probably not the greatest idea to stay logged in on it uh this old computer on a old operating system with a browser that is intended for legacy support, but that last one is not a factor that I'm concerned about. And then it was my lunch time, so after I had lunch, I made a folder for my data so I can go copy it all over to my main PC, because there's some of these that I may need, and transfer it over, and then I decided to finish this off, well, let's just play a game. What game? Uh, I played Bejeweled Twist. I didn't get footage of this, but it's a very interesting interesting spin-off of the Bejeweled series that has quite neat music in my opinion, but that's basically gonna be about it. So I decided to shut this down and well, yeah. I somehow managed to use Windows 7, an operating system from almost 15 years ago, as my main operating system for seven days, and I somehow love to tell the tale. In fact, you can actually do this yourself if you have some, like, older computer and you don't need to do a lot on a computer. However, do be aware that you're not going to be getting security updates, and it may not be l very long until antivirus programs have stopped providing definitions or newer versions. I'm not sure, but you can do this yourself. It's not as bad as trying to use Windows XP, where you have to be very careful of malware and stuff, but it was a mostly pleasant experience apart from the PC probably overheating at one point. So I'd recommend it if you have spare time on your hands. I had to do this during the summer because of, of school. So I had to do this during the summer because I had no other option, at least for now. Maybe in a couple years I might have free time. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs>